For the next bit of the lesson, you're going to be using a FET simulation to look at how you add these uh, forces when they are in different directions. And so if you follow the link, it will open up the FET simulation for you. And then you're going to have to choose Explore 2D. Then you're going to have to click on the red minus sign in the top left. Then you're going to drag a vector A to start from the origin. Drag a vector B to start from the origin. Then you're going to predict what you think the resultant force will be. Once you've done that, you can tick the sum in the top right to reveal the resultant force, which will be in blue, and see if your prediction was correct. And then we're going to do a thing where we move A and B so they line up in a thing called tip to tail and also move the resultant force. So I will demonstrate this for you now and then you'll be able to have a go yourself using the FET simulation. Okay, so when you open up the FET simulation, you're going to click on Explore 2D and once you've done that, then you are going to click on this red minus sign at the top. Then you're going to drag from vector A and drag that out over to here. And for the first one, I want you to line it up so it is going 10 newtons horizontally. Then you're going to drag out B from over here and make it so it is starting at the origin and then drag it so it is 10 newtons acting vertically. Then you're going to make your prediction which way do you think the resultant force is going to act. Once you have made your prediction, then you can click on this sum and reveal it and hopefully you predicted that it would be going in this direction. <clears throat> okay, now what you are going to do is you're going to drag the vector B and move it so that it is starting from the tip of vector A. And this is called making it tip to tail. And hopefully what you notice at this point is that when you arrange the vectors tip to tail, so that the start of one force is from the arrow tip of the first force, that then the resultant force shown here is the completing side of the triangle. And this is what you're going to be drawing in a little bit. The next thing to notice is it doesn't matter whether you do force A and then force B, or whether you do force B and then force A, which we can see if I move the vectors round, the forces round. So I've got force B and then force A because they're still arranged in the so-called tip to tail, where the arrow head of this one is at the joins up with the end which doesn't have the arrow of this one, then the resultant force is still across here. Once you have tried it with those 10 Newton ones, then you can try some different ones of your choice by, <coughs> first of all, turning the sum off again, up here so that you can't see what the answer is going to be, returning the vectors and you can start again and then you can drag out your vector A and choose what you would like it to be. I'm going for the 10 newtons horizontally again and then for vector B and I'm starting it from the origin and I'm choosing a force going in this direction and then you can think hmm what is the resultant force direction going to be? And hopefully you realise that the resultant force is always going to be acting somewhere in between force A and force B. And then you can try arranging them in the tip to tail configuration. And once you've done that, you can turn back the vector sum on, which will give you the resultant force in blue here. And you can see that when you arrange forces from tip to tail like this, that the resultant force or the sum of the forces comes out to be the other side of the triangle. So once you've done that, you can turn off this sum again and move your vectors A and B round, starting from the origin again and make your prediction about what the resultant force will be. So 
<clears throat> here's another example for you. A, the first force acting like that, the second force acting like that, and then you can make your prediction that the resultant force is going to be somewhere in here. Then you can arrange them in the tip to tail, turn on the sum, and see if you were correct. So that's given you some ideas. So remember, you can put them either way round, and the resultant force still works.